In our last video, we discussed how we can create the POJOs for the address and the location to work with the complex data structure or the complex JSON structure that we were talking about in our earlier video, something like this, and how we can make use of the POJOs to make things happen. And we also saw how we can actually leverage the power of the existing code that you can see in here for creating the query params and stuff using the library method that we're actually working in for the parameter operation. So we already have all these setups in place. All we have to do is just make use of it and start working with it. So now the next question comes is we need to pass the actual query params within our get with query params uh, token method that we created in our earlier video. So for doing that, the first thing I'm going to do is as a map, I'm going to pass the string of string of the query params and again you may ask like why we are still doing this we need to somehow move this to the pojos as of now just bear with me we are going to refactor that as well but as of now you can see that i'm actually going to use the hash maps and then i'm going to pass the query params uh, i'm going to do a put method in here and then i'm going to pass the id and as you remember in our earlier video, I showed you how we can actually query params of ID is equal to one. If we do that, it actually gets things. So I'm just going to pass an ID uh, with a data dot get of maybe one dot get of zero can actually uh, get the query params. And now we actually need to get the actual response. So for doing that, I'm just going to do a response is equal to a uh, rest assured extension dot get ops with query params with token. So this is kind of crazy that we keep on creating different methods, uh, probably to reduce that. We'll be extending that in our upcoming videos as I told you before. But as of now, just bear with me, we are gonna be uh, going around uh, with like this. And now we need to pass the token in here. So if you remember in our earlier videos while working with the tokens, we actually passed the token something like this. So we can still use the exact same way of doing it over here, or we can even write another method to do that. And again, guys, we are gonna be refactoring this code as I told you as a framework. By the time we can actually take care of all of that, as of now, just bear with me, this is how the response is going to look like uh, along with the authentication token or the access token that we are passing in. So this way, this particular uh, step definition has been implemented as well. The final step definition, which we are pretty much interested in, is going to be how we are going to be validating this particular street name. So this code, again, as we saw in our earlier videos for the posts, something like this, we're gonna do exactly the same way in here as well. So I'm just going to do something like var of location is equal to response dot get body dot as, and you know that the location is once again an array. So this time, as you can see, I'm actually calling an array of locations basically. Because as you can see within the postman, you can see this is basically returning as an array of the locations. So if I just put the location and if I do a get operation, you can see that there are two locations coming in. So basically the location itself is an array. So that's why I'm putting an array in here and then getting a class operation. And within this location, we actually have what is called as an address. So I'm just gonna do an address uh, so I'm going to import a class, which I'm going to do something like a location of zero. So I'm just assuming this time as this is the first location that I'm actually going to be getting because this is what the value is going to be as well. And then over here, I'm going to get address. And because as you know, the get address actually is a list of addresses. So we need to somehow filter the address that we are looking for. So if you just do a get of address, basically this is gonna give you all the address which is residing within this particular address. So how do you actually try to filter out the address? Because 
we can see in here the postman so if i just see this there are two addresses basically sitting so let's say if i'm interested in the primary address so for doing that if i just go over here then i should see the street name as first street for the primary address this way it's even more sensible than the one which we have actually created right now so i can probably use this one uh, i'm just gonna cut this guy paste this code over here i'm gonna remove these two things over here so this is gonna be the street name and this is gonna be the type so you can see it's gonna be street name and this is gonna be the address type so now it makes even more aligned so basically we're gonna find uh, the street name based on the type of the address it is so that's why we have two parameters and that's what is the step basically saying to us so now it's very easy for us to filter as well so how do we actually filter that within our code so for doing that I'm actually gonna use what is called as a stream of filter so you can see that the stream of filter is basically coming from the predicate that you can actually pass in and see what basically you are looking for so i'm going to use a, a arrow expression or basically in c sharp it's a lambda expression where i'm actually gonna get the type which is equal to now i'm basically filtering if the type is equal to primary then return me that particular street name something like that so uh, i'm gonna say it's equals or ignore case to be a type that we are passing in then you just give me uh, maybe it's more readability then just give me find first or else return me a null value so this way you can see that it's basically gonna filter the address based on the type of address so because we have two addresses in here we're going to filter that based on a type so that we can get the street name that we are looking for and now we have a perfect address that we're actually looking for and now we can do an actual assertion and we'll see what's basically uh, our street name is going to look like so i'm going to do an assert that i'm going to say as address dot get street it's going to turn as the street name that's the power of pojo guys you can see it's so easy and now i can just pass equal to the street name that's it so this way i can ensure that the street name that i'm looking for is actually the street name that i'm expecting it so now if i try to execute this bigger piece of code uh, so we have all of these uh, code that we're looking for is correct i'm just going to run this particular scenario we'll see what's going to basically happen so we can see that the location is being passed authentication is correct and also the location of one is being passed in the query parameter and the test has got passed here guys you can see that it is pretty fast and we have no issue at all so if you don't believe me if it is correct or not so just put a streets in here uh, and if i try to execute this particular piece of code and i'm gonna see what's gonna basically happen there you go and it says that it's expected as first streets but actually it was first street so basically it returns as uh, the value that we are looking for so let me make this as correct value so this way you can see that we can actually get the responses as expected uh, from the api and we can also ensure that our coding is not hard coded anywhere so you can see that this is very much easy and it's not hard coded elsewhere uh, and also the one thing that you may be thinking as hard coded is this particular location of zero but it is not guys because we are actually expecting a query parameter to be passed in as one and which we are already passing in over here for the query parameter so we are anyways going to get first value so that's why the location is zero in here so it's not hard coded but still there is high chances this particular code may throw an exception so we can handle this gracefully as well but again it's up to you like how you want to leverage that but for the basic course i don't think we really have to uh, worry about this particular piece a lot so this is how we can actually work with a complex structure using the pojo classes 
In our next video, I will also show you another trick of validating the JSON schema using the JSON schema matchers, which is available within REST Assured. And from there, we can start developing the actual framework. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.